dividend growth investing hasn't protected me from all the ravages of the stock market so far this year, but thanks largely to DGI, my portfolios have been hanging in there pretty darn well. One small corner of my personal portfolio does include a few growth stocks that pay no dividends. High quality names like Tesla and Alphabet and Adobe and Amazon, as well as a few spec plays. Even though most of those have fallen hard during the severe market pullback, my portfolio is only down about 2.5% this year. Why? Because of the strength of my proven dividend growing stocks, especially those in defensive sectors like healthcare, utilities, and consumer staples. The S&P 500 index fell 13.5% from the start of the year through the first week of May, and the Nasdaq plunged almost 22.5%. Using the two public real money projects I manage for this channel, the Income Builder Portfolio and the Growth and in Income Portfolio, I'll demonstrate how dividend growth investing has been kind of a shelter from the storm. Hi everybody, Mike Nadell here for the Dividends and Income channel. Before I talk more about DGI as something of a refuge from 2022's falling market, please do us a favor to help our channel grow. Pop the thumbs up at the bottom of the video, subscribe, and ring the bell so you get notifications of new videos as we publish them. All right, now let's talk a little more about the rough go investors have had so far this year and how dividend growth investing has helped cushion the blow. Combined, the Income Builder and Growth and in Income portfolios have 54 holdings. Of those 54 stocks, 15 had an even worse total return than the 13 plus percent loss of the S&P 500. Those include all three of the non-dividend stocks, DraftKings, Amazon, and Alphabet, as well as several other low yielders like Zoetis, Lamb Research, Nike, and Microsoft. Next era is the one utility in the two portfolios that's fallen hard, and that's mostly because it was extremely overvalued at the start of the year. Also very overvalued back on January 1st was Oedis, Nike, Air Products, Home Depot, and BlackRock. Growth dominated for several years, but value has been the winner so far in 2022. Now let's take a look at the 16 companies from the IBP and GIP that emerged from this year's first 18 weeks in positive total return territory. The Income Builder portfolio's four highest yielders, Altria, AT&T, Philip Morris, and Pinnacle West were among the winners, as was Sempra, the growth and in income portfolio's highest yielder. That list of top performers includes four healthcare companies in AbbVie, Amgen, Johnson & Johnson, and Medtronic, three consumer staples in Altria, Philip Morris, and McCormick, and three utilities in Sempra, American Electric, and Pinnacle West. Other big winners were our three defense contractors, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and General Dynamics, with total returns ranging from 60% to 27%. Technically, those companies are in the more cyclical industrial sector, but they act like more defensive plays. There's always either a threat of war or is now in the case in Ukraine, an actual war going on. So government money's always flowing into the Pentagon's coffers. I've talked about the best performances coming out of defensive sectors, but our number one position through the first 18 weeks of 2022 came out of the highly cyclical energy sector, Chevron, with a whopping 47% total return. Why have Chevron and other major oil companies performed so well this year? Well, due to a variety of factors, including inflation and Russia's war on Ukraine, the price of oil moved up to about $110 a gallon. That's five times where it was just two years ago during the worst of the pandemic and at its highest level since 2014. So we also just buy Chevron and all big oil stocks, right? Well, as this fast graphs image shows, if you're going to be long-term Chevron investors, you have to be able to stomach some pretty serious earnings declines from a cyclical company and a cyclical industry in a cyclical sector. And the red circled area at the bottom right of the graphic shows that earnings are expected to move down again in 2023 and 2024. So what's an investor to do? Well, this investor is just going to keep doing what I've been doing for years. I'm going to hold on to my high quality dividend growing companies. I'm going to add on to the positions when I have money available and when I believe valuations are favorable, and I'm going to occasionally add a new stock when it fits my investing philosophy. This channel's co-founder, Greg Patrick, also provides $1,000 semi-monthly for me to invest on his behalf in the Income Builder portfolio. My most recent choices came from a variety of sectors. Microsoft from technology, Union Pacific and Cummins from industrials, Avista from utilities, Morgan Stanley from financials, Sherwin-Williams from materials, Reynolds, Philip Morris, and Constellation Brands from consumer staples, and Starbucks and McDonald's from consumer discretionary. You can see all 47 Income Builder portfolio positions, as well as links to every IBP-related article I've written by clicking on the link in the description. About two years ago, I launched a growth and income portfolio with the idea that I'd eventually use the proceeds to help pay college costs for my four grandkids, Logan, Jack, Owen, and the newest addition, Piper. Like so many folks who aren't lucky enough to have thousands of dollars available to invest every month, I make small buys of as little as $25 on each stock. You might do something similar, or you might invest more. And either way, it might have nothing to do with saving for college 15 or 20 years down the line. We all have different goals. 
As the name suggests, the growth in income portfolio is growthier than the IBP. Most recently, I bought pieces of Toronto Dominion Bank, McDonald's, Lockheed Martin, Amazon, Pepsi, Lamb Research, Microsoft, and Nike. You can see information about all 18 GIP holdings on our homepage by clicking on the link in the description. Once on our Dividends and Income website, become a subscriber and you'll be notified whenever I write an article about my buys and sells in both portfolios. The market goes up and the market goes down, but by choosing high-quality dividend-growing stocks, the income stream pretty much only goes up and almost always the price follows along. Four stocks that are in both the Income Builder and Growth and Income portfolios raised their dividends in April. Three of the four, Costco, Johnson & Johnson, and Constellation Brands, gave their shareholders bigger raises this time than they did in 2021, a trend I always like to see. Yes, boring, dividend-paying stocks have been the way to go so far in 2022. A major reason my personal portfolio has outperformed the overall market is that dividend-growing stocks from the defensive sectors of consumer staples, healthcare, and utilities combine to make up about half of my portfolio. I haven't abandoned tech, industrials, and the rest, though, because eventually the market will become growthier again. I'm a big fan of diversification. Sure, dividend-growing companies occasionally have their issues, but you can't raise dividends for decades the way a business like, say, Johnson & Johnson has done without being fundamentally strong and without growing earnings and revenue. Even when dividend-growing stocks do stumble, they pay me to wait for the price to recover. And just about all of them do recover over time. I mean, less than a decade ago, Microsoft was a 3% yielding dinosaur that couldn't get out of its own way. But then came a change in CEOs and focus, and voila, look at what Microsoft has done since about 2015. I just read an interesting article on CNBC.com that of the 53 tech-related companies that went public last year, 50 of them are now trading below their IPO prices, and more than half of them have lost at least 50% of their value, including well-known names like Robinhood, Coinbase, and Rivian. Hey, we're all looking for the next stock to give us the kind of performance that Microsoft has for most of the last several years. And though we might not find exactly that, we can be rewarded by following our plan, staying disciplined, and not chasing the latest and greatest just because supposedly everybody else is. All right, guys, that's all for today. Again, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our content. Take it easy, everybody. Back at you soon.